In this program, we'll control how many pixels of the LED strip are on with a turn knob. Anytime we're using the LED strip, we want to include the LED strip.h library. A code library gives your program access to special functions that make it easier to control the LED strip, like set pixel, draw, and clear. To use the LED strip library, we need to name our LED strip, and I've named mine strip because that's easy for me to remember and easy to type. We also need to complete this LED strip function, and that has three arguments. First, how many pixels are on our LED strip? Second, which pin of MakerBoard is plugged into the green wire of the LED strip? And third, which pin of the MakerBoard is plugged into the blue wire of the LED strip? Within the void setup function, use the pin mode function to set port A2 as an input. This is going to be on the smaller block of ports at the bottom of MakerBoard. The turn knob is reversible, so as long as the center pin is in the A2 port, you can turn it either way and have either outside pin in the port plus or port minus. Within the void loop, the first thing we're going to do is create a variable. This variable is going to hold how many pixels should be lit up on the LED strip. First we name the type of variable. This is an integer variable shortened to int, and that means the variable value is only going to be whole numbers, no decimal places. Next I'll name the variable, and I've named this pixel count because that's what this variable is going to stand in for, the count of pixels that are lit up on the strip. After a single equal sign, we give the variable its starting value. This is an analog read from port A2, so this is taking the value that the turn knob is sending in, and that value can range from 0 to 1023 and anything in between. On line 13, we're immediately changing the value of pixel count with this single equal sign. We're going to do that with the map function. The map function allows us to match up two ranges of numbers even if one range is much larger than the other. In this case, we want the reading from port A2, which can range from 0 to 1023, to map onto a range of 0 to pixel 14 lit up on the strip, and we can use the map function to do that. The map function has five arguments. First, the value that we're mapping we're mapping the pixel count variable value. The second argument is what is the lowest number from the range you're mapping from? That's zero here because that's the lowest value that the turn knob can send in. The third argument is what is the highest value from the range you're mapping from? Again, this is the highest value that the turn knob can send in to the code, so it's 1023. The fourth argument is what is the value you want to map the second argument to? So we're matching up these two ranges of numbers and when we get a reading of zero from port A2, the fourth argument tells the code what to match that to on the new range. So here we're matching zero to zero. And the fifth argument of map tells the program what are you mapping the third argument to? So the third argument is that maximum value we can get from the turn knob, and we want to map that to a value of 14 on pixel count, because we can light up pixel numbers from 0 to 14. So a reading of 1023 on the turn knob should translate to pixel number 14 being lit up. The map function also maps all the values in between these two ranges. So for example, the middle of the from range is about 500, and the middle of the to range is about 7, and so a value of 500 on the turn knob is going to translate to pixel 7 being lit up. After line 13 runs, pixel count now has a value ranging from 0 to 14. On line 16, the clear function is going to clear off any lights that are lit up on the strip. We're basically clearing the entire LED strip every time the void loop runs and then rewriting the number of pixels that should be displayed based on the turn knob reading. 
on line 20, we have a for loop. The for loop has four main parts. First, a variable that's created and given an initial value. Second, a condition that is checked. Third, a change to the variable that happens after the code between the curly braces runs. And fourth, the code between the curly braces that runs when the condition of the for loop is true. In this case, we're creating an integer variable, which means it will be a whole number value, with a name of i, and i is a common name to use for a counter variable in a for loop, and after a single equal sign, we're setting i equal to zero. The condition checks if the value of the i variable is less than or equal to the pixel count variable. After the code in the curly braces runs, i will increase by one with this i++ code. And the code inside the curly braces is a set pixel function. The set pixel function has two arguments. First, which pixel or pixels do we want to light up on the strip? And this number can range from 0 to 14. Instead of using a number, we're using the value of the i variable to determine which pixel is getting lit up. And the second argument of set pixel is the color value we want to show on those pixels. This can range from 0 to 299. I chose 200, which is green. After the for loop ends, there is a draw function that's going to send that set pixel data out to the strip to be displayed. And then the void loop ends, so the code will jump back up to line 12. Let's look at how this void loop is going to run. First, you create a pixel count variable that is an integer. And for its value, you take a reading from port A2. And let's imagine the knob is turned all the way to one side, so it's sending in 1023 as a value. On line 13, you reassign the value of pixel count using the map function. And the map function is going to say, a reading of 1023 now maps to 14. So by the time line 13 has finished running, pixel count equals 14. On line 16, any pixels that are lit up on the strip are cleared away. And on line 20, the for loop starts to run. An integer of i is given a value of 0, and because 0 is less than the pixel count variable, 14, the code between the curly braces is going to run. And it's going to use the setPixel function to set pixel 0 to a color value of 200. And remember, pixel 0 is the pixel that's closest to the wires that plug in to the maker board. Once the for loop reaches its closing curly brace, it will run i++, and now the i variable is equal to 1. 1 is less than 14, so the code between the curly braces will run, setting pixel 1 to a color value of 200. The for loop reaches its closing curly and increases i by 1 again, so 1 becomes 2, and 2 is less than 14, so the code between the curly braces runs again. This will continue until i equals 14. When that happens, pixel 14 will get set to a color value of 200, so the entire LED strip will be lit, and it will increase i from 14 to 15. 15 is not less than or equal to 14. So the code between the curly braces is skipped over, and this for loop is complete. The strip.draw function is going to send those 14 strip.set pixel functions out to the strip, immediately lighting up your entire LED strip. And because there are no delays in this program, all of this is going to happen in under a second. When the program reaches the end of the void loop, it will jump back up to the first line of code it can run in the void loop and start again. Now imagine that you have turned the knob all the way over to the other side, and so pixel count takes an analog read from port A2, and that reading is zero. On line 13, the map function is going to map zero reading to zero pixels. The strip.clear function is going to clear out the entire LED strip, and the for loop will start to run again. An integer i is set equal to zero, and zero is less than or equal to zero. So the condition is true, so the code between the curly braces will run, setting pixel 0 to a color value of 200. 
Once the for loop reaches its closing curly brace, i++ changes i from 0 to 1. 1 is not less than or equal to 0. So the code between the curly braces is skipped and this for loop is complete. The strip.draw function is going to first clear the strip and then light up one pixel, pixel 0, to a color value of 200 before reaching the end of the void loop and then the program will jump back up and take another reading from the turn knob. There are no delays here, so the turn knob is going to be really reactive to your touch, and as you twist it, the number of pixels lit up should change immediately.